Hello, I am Marcus and welcome to this new episode of EV Journey. If you haven't done so before, please click subscribe below because it's going to help this channel. And this week, hopefully, I'll be able to put up two very special episodes that I think you'll be very interested in. But in the meantime, Car Maniacs has done the review everybody has been waiting for. So he has done a 130 km hour test and a 160 km hour test in the ID3 first. You can see it below. So we're only going to concentrate on the 130 km hour test and we're going to compare it against some other cars. So he got 20.5 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on his 130 km hour test. So that means the car will just get under 300 kilometers. So my guess is the car at 120 kilometers per hour, which is the speed limit in Portugal, will give 300 kilometers at least. This is absolutely perfect because my expectation was that the car would do 250 kilometers at motorway speed, but it seems that it can manage 300 kilometers at motorway speed. This doesn't make the car fantastic, but it makes it perfectly acceptable and the same as the competition. So here we're talking about the 58 kilowatt hour ID3 first. We're not going to talk about the 77 um, kilowatt hour version or the 45 kilowatt hour version because the only one Car Maniacs could test was the 58 kilowatt hour first. So I'm going to compare this now to some other cars. So below other people have tested cars at 120 kilometers an hour. One of them obviously is Bjorn Nieland. So I'm going to leave Bjorn Nieland's links below to the videos where he's tested cars. So the, out of the three Korean cars, the E-Soul, the Kia e-Nero and the Hyundai Kona, I've chosen the E-Soul. Why have I chosen the E-Soul? Because it's the cheapest of the three co Korean cars. They've all got the same battery size, the same drive chain, train, but it's the cheapest. That's 43,000 euros compared to 38,000 euros for mine. So it's 5,000 euros more expensive. So that also comes in at 300 kilometers at 120 kilometer an hour test. I think the E-Nero and the Kona get slightly better, but those are more expensive um, cars, well over 46,000 euros. So now we're going to go to the Zoe 50. Now Bjorn Nilon did not test this one at 120 kilometers an hour, but Chris from Battery Life, his video is below, he managed to get 200 kilometers at 145 an hour. So um, I guess at 120 kilometers an hour, you're probably looking at 220, 230, 240 kilometers of range for the Zoe ZE50. Now the Zoe ZE50 is only slightly cheaper than my ID3 first. Uh, the one with CCS is around 35, 36,000 euros. Now we're going to look at the Peugeot E208. Now obviously this is a cheaper car. This one starts at 31,000 euros. The base model is 31,000 euros. And that at 120 kilometers an hour, tested by Bjorn Nieland, gets a range of 182 kilometers. So less than the Zoe 50. Now let's go on to the magic car here, the Model 3 SR Plus. So Model 3 Short Range Plus, that gets 300 kilometers, tested by Bjorn Nieland at 100 kilometers an hour. So basically the ID3 gets the same as the Model 3 Short Range Plus, which is at least 11,000 euros more expensive than the ID3 first. Um, it gets the same as the E-Soul at 300 kilometers. And obviously it's, going, it's better than the Zoe 50, which is a similar price. And it's obviously better than the E28, Peugeot E28, which is a cheaper car um, with a lower battery. So What's very impressive here is I was expecting 250 kilometers of range on the motorway. That was my expectation um, at 120 kilometers an hour. It's actually given us 300 kilometers of range on the motorway, which is absolutely perfect. It's better than my expectation. And it goes to show that people were worried that the Volkswagen ID3 wouldn't be efficient, but it just proves that it is efficient. The MEB platform is good and it's given us the range that we want. It's not better than the competition, but it's the same as the competition. And that's exactly what we want because the Tesla Model 3 Short Range Plus, the Kias and the Hyundai's, they already have very good efficiency. They already have very good range. So it's just amazing that the ID3 first matches them because both of those are the market leaders currently and the ID3 first is also cheaper than those. So, so it's great that Volkswagen has managed to match values on the motorway. We don't know what the values are for the 90 km hour test, but I guess on the ID3 first, it should be around, it should be more than 400 kilometers going on these figures for 90 km hour test, but we don't know what that is yet. 
So, because we've got these three cars here, Car Maniacs also did a charging curve. I'm going to compare the charging curve of the ID3 first, the eSoul, the Zoe 50, the E28, and the Model 3 short range, and we're going to look at that now. So here we have the charging curve. So here we have it in kilowatts, and here we have the percentage. So with all of them, I start at 10% and I go to 80%. I got all of these by watching Bjorn Nilon's videos very slowly to see the charging curve, and they've all been done on the Ionity. And the one for the ID3, which is this one here, is the one I got from watching Car Maniac's video slowly. So all the video links are down below. So if you want to watch them, this one starts 100 kilowatts for the ID3 first. Here we've got the Tesla Model 3 short range. Now that starts at around 170 kilowatts, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Now this is on the Ionity chargers. I believe the superchargers in Portugal only go up to 150 and currently there's no Ionity chargers in Portugal. Everything else is 50 kilowatts. So in Portugal, everything will be around 50 kilowatts apart from the Tesla, which should be around 150 on the superchargers because there's not the very, very, very quick superchargers in Portugal yet. They are probably coming. But I expect this year or next year in Portugal, we'll have Ionity chargers. So this will be very useful for us to know. So let's just look at the Tesla Model 3 here. As you can see, it starts 170. It starts to go down. It goes down quite linearly. This point here, we're about um 50 percent of charging it's at 86 so it goes down and it keeps going down to here and we get to 80 percent it's only at 34 kilowatts so probably you want to unplug model 3 short range plus probably around 68 uh, percent probably won't want to go up to 80 percent unless you really need that amount of energy so the id3 is the second best one and this constantly keeps um the curve at a 100 kilowatts until around 35 percent so you see the model 3 is still way above it. So model 3 though it's coming down it's it's still above the speed of the id3 first and then it starts to come down like this the id3 first so when we get around 45 percent we're charging at 80 kilowatts which is not so different to the Model 3 short range plus. We go along at 80 kilowatts until around 52. Then we move it down again. And then we keep moving down more linearly here until we get to around 70%. At that point, it keeps to 50 kilowatts. So it goes all the way along to 50 kilowatts. Here, it um, charges a bit quicker than the Model 3. So probably on the ID3 first, you can charge to 80%. And it's quite quick. So that's the second best one. Obviously, it's not better than the Model 3 Short Range Plus. I'd be a fool to say it's better than the Model 3 Short Range Plus just because at this area it charges a bit quicker. No, the Model 3 Short Range Plus is absolutely amazing on the Honor T chargers with its charging speed. Nothing on here beats it, not, in, not even the ID3 first 58 kilowatt version. This so next one is the E28. So that starts at 100, but only for like 1%. And then it goes down to 96 and it stays there for quite a while. So that's very good uh, for such a small car. So that goes down to um, at 19%. It suddenly drops to 76. And then it goes along there and it suddenly drops again at 48. And it starts going along at 52 for quite a while, 52 kilowatts until it goes down. And then here, at this point here, it becomes worse than our next car, the grey one, which is the Kia eSoul. So the Kia eSoul, it starts lower than the E208. Then it almost follows the E208 up to um, 48%. Then at 48%, it has a higher charge than the E208. That drops suddenly the E208. But this one drops suddenly at 55%. Then it goes along slightly higher um, than the E208. It even passes the Model 3 and the ID3 first here, but then it comes down again suddenly. So the Model 3 and the ID3 first here. It seems this is an important point where everything passes one another. It comes down lower again. eSoul is definitely worse than the e 208 It is definitely worse than the ID3 first. Now we're going to look at the Zoe. And remember, the Zoe, Zoe is more expensive than the e 208 It's an expensive car. And that, because it can go higher than 50 kilowatts, it can't even stay at 50 kilowatts. It just bounce, It just goes from 42 to 44 to 45. Then it goes down slowly. Only here does it pass the E208 at 73%. But that's already, you know, <laughs> there's no point of it passing. It passes it, but only slightly. 
Here it passes the ESOL at 78%, but it's basically the same. So the Zoe Z50, even with CCS, even with a bigger battery than the E208, a 50 kilowatt hour battery versus I believe a 40 kilowatt hour battery, the charging curve is absolutely pathetic compared to the other ones. What's interesting here is the ESOL, the, the E Nero and the Kona have very similar charging curves. In range, they may be slightly better, but I expect the ID3 first on the 1000 kilometer challenge to be quicker than any of the Korean cars. So it will be quicker than the E208, it'll be quicker than the Korean cars, it will be quicker than the Zoe by far. It will not beat this, the 1000 kilometer race that Bull, um, Bjorn Nilan normally does of the Model 3 short range plus, because the charging curve is just amazing and the range is the same. So I'm extremely happy with both results for the range result and for the charging curve result. So that is just perfect. Thank you for watching this episode of EV Journey. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave your comments below about what you feel about the ID3 range and the charging curve. Obviously, I'm very happy with it. It fully meets my expectations. Thank you and goodbye.